if it doesn't work out. Wholeheartedly. Now, I've read that your eye was originally inspired by the rich natural beauty of Western Australia. And now that your signature trademark is creating a unique blend of fashion with exotic locations, was that something you were consciously aware of at the beginning when you were starting out, or is it almost a style that's developed spontaneously over time? Um, it wasn't a style that I... It's something that I... It was happening, and I didn't recognise it until later in my career. I uh, began photography overall really inspired by landscapes and portraiture of, of people. When I say people, 70-year-old lady sitting in a cafe in Greece, uh, in, a, in, a, in a Greek island. or um, And it became that combination beauty in terms of female form which has become a part of my brand and c combining that with landscape was just illogical to me that I actually wasn't thinking oh this is what I want to be and this is the plan it was it was it was instinctive so it was very much inspired out of um, um, Perth raised mm -hmm. and then I had great exposure to areas like uh, the northwest and the Kimberley and of course down our local down south and of course right here in Perth this, this incredible blend of the modern sitting right on the edge of this I don't think you appreciate just looking along the coastline what we have or yeah. um, how uh, amazing s things are very close by. So in, in bridging the, in bridging the um, uh, combining the, the sort of natural landscape with the beauty world, it's yeah. natural and instinctive for me. Yeah. Um, but it was a, a man called David Lippman who's an amazing creative director in New York. Again, everyone needs mentors yeah. and I think a lot of the Perth Fashion Festival is about mentorship. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons I'd like to be there as, as, as part of that mentor program and the more senior people in the community also providing mentorship. Um, but I was mentored by a guy who sort of took those raw elements and he was um, at the, the top of his game in New York City and one of the senior creative people there and sort of took me like a kid and sat me down and said, boom, all right, every night here for a couple hours every day. And that went on for two years. Had me looking at the books of old masters, understanding composition and how things work together, yeah. um, why they work together. And then he helped me to combine the things that I love and have passion for into those into those layers. And now it's completely instinctive. Yeah, terrific. You know, so at the end of your shoot, you're sitting down editing your work. What are you looking for when you're editing? That's the X factor. I usually have what I think I was doing as I set out on, on the journey. And I, I have, I, I call it executing the master. So I have a master view, you know, this would be happening and there'd be a helicopter up here and the person would be underwater and the little mountain would be here. And that usually you get that, but then there's the sort of uh, you know just just going out in the tangential space. Once I have things, I let the camera roam. Um, so when I look, when I edit film, I have an amazing uh, creative director, Ali Franco, who's been with me from the very beginning in the creative space. And um, again, collaborations are imperative to be successful. You don't do it all on your own. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she'll look through the film and give me first feedback. But I'm looking for something that gives me a gut reaction. Yeah. And very often. From a client perspective, I'll end up in a situation with a client saying, oh, this is what we think it is, and yeah, you've got that. And then I know there's emotionally much stronger content that wasn't exactly on what they, what they thought they are going to get, and yeah. I have to go in and say, okay, sit down, let's have, let's have a reality check here. This, on an emotive level, is what's going to engage people yeah. because it engages me, and I'm, you know, and I'm sure it's, you know, it's, enga it's engaging. And that's um, sort of... That is the art versus the science. It's like looking at it, not understanding why, but like I really like that and, and uh, going with that as opposed to what I set out to do. You were mentioning engaging. Now, I've read that, or it's been said, a good photograph is one that communicates a fact, touches the heart and leaves the viewer a changed person for having seen it. It is in one word effective. So on that point, what would you say makes a good fashion photograph, one that emotionally people can grab onto? Or? Um, I think the most important is a, a timeless emotive connection. A really good photograph. Um, it, fashion, in and of by its nature, is changing. You know, it evolves every month. If you, from an artistic standpoint, limit yourself to fashion magazines in terms of understanding that, um, you're sort of missing the bigger picture. To me, a great photograph from a fashion spread mm -hmm. should be one that, if I lift it out and put it up in a gallery five years from now, it's going to have relevance. Like Jackie O'Nassie walking across the street, or exactly, like that. You exactly. Sort of You've in cap you capture a moment in time, mm -hmm. and as you said, the emotive connect is everything. There's there's a there's a feel to a moment in a photograph, um, and the best way you can service fashion is actually through the emotive content in the photograph and having you know something that engages you emotionally and, and that could be in a gallery five years from now is going to do better than just showing the pocket with the button and the I absolutely showed you the zip was here. Yeah, wholeheartedly. Now, you've um, talked before about mentorship. The man who said that quote before, Irving Penn, has been noted as one of your inspirations. What was it about his work that appealed to you personally? Um, simplicity, 
deliberate, disciplined composition and his ability to take anything from a major celebrity or an actress or a cigarette butt and make them as equally compelling in terms of a blown up image on a wall. Mm -hmm. um, literally, there's a photograph of a crushed cigarette butt that I, that I just am fascinated. Stop. I cannot it. stop. And, and um, so the content of the image can be driven by composition, lighting, and presentation. Um, so Irving Penn, for me, who um, I've had this great honor uh, most recently, I opened in an exhibition with Irving Penn's uh, collection in uh, September 23rd in the Stockholm Museum, mm -hmm. and that collection will travel. Um, it's very ironic that I was very inspired by so much of his, his, uh, his work, and it really is that deliberate, disciplined composition. And, um, you know, he was renowned for taking four or five frames and saying, I've got it, let's go let's move on. I can just see the client saying, you know, we've just spent you know, yeah. these gazillion dollars and you're doing four frames and moving on. Um, but the best part about it was Irving never let them in the studio. He was like, I'm going to start work now, please wait outside. Yeah, yeah wholeheartedly. <laughs> now, you started your career in photography late in life compared to that of your peers. Um, first, you were sheet metal apprentice and then uh, officer for the West Australian Police. You've said that when I finally discovered photography, it was like finding the right partner. You just know it's for life. Now, that's a pretty profound experience. How long of searching did it take for you to get to that point? Um, I think when it sort of hit me over the head like a like a uh, you know a bunch of a bucket of bricks yep. was when I was um, uh, in the in the late 80s in Sweden in a dark room, and I'd been touched on photography at different times, and I was just watching the image of and The image itself was by a chap called Carla Bosco, and it was just so powerful and compelling that it really it, it caught me and it changed me. Um, so I'd say the journey up until then was um, everything had relevance but I didn't, I didn't know it. Um, photography or successful photography is also about a kind of maturity and understanding the things around you. Mm -hmm. So um, I know there are great photographers in their 20s who I admire and think they're fantastic. I personally wouldn't have had the maturity or understanding of what I wanted to deliver in a photograph until I'd, I'd been a cop, until I'd been a metal worker and mixed it up, you know, for many years, until I'd been a dog trainer, until I'd been broken, like trying to survive in the middle of Europe. All of those experiences uh, um, led to a sort of photographic skill set. Terrific. Now, in today's society, names like Russell James, Mario Testino and Annie Leibovitz are as iconic as the faces they shoot. Since the late 1980s when you started out with your photography, how has the world of photography changed over that 20-year you know, period? Um, it's changed profoundly. One of the big, the biggest change I'd say in the last, um, l less than the last decade was photography moved from being, there was always a kind of a, a snobbery uh, against photography in terms of the art community. Photography moved, um, was considered to be photography and art was art. And there was forays into the artistic space where some major galleries would cover photography as art. But in the last um, 10 years, and then fast forward that to the last five years, Photography has become embraced as an art form and the way it, it archives time and captures time. And, and um, so now you see major galleries all over the world um, that will have solely photographically driven exhibitions. That is probably the, the greatest change that I've seen. I also saw um, sort of trends versus fads um, when I started. There was a tremendous amount of uh, movement like it has to be something that person has to be now and today. And I saw a lot of the guys that had this great track record like Peter Lindbergh, Bruce Weber, um, Irving Penn, almost marginalised and then all these young guys. I was happy to see all the young guys come through but then there was a kind of shift a couple of years later like hang on we've lost something because everything started to look the same yep. and they're like we have to blend it with the young nurturing talent that we come on and we have these people are significant important so I've seen this resurgence in these um, in, in the Peter Lindberghs and in the Bruce Webbers and, and that has played a really significant role and helped to um, sort of flourish the industry into a, an artistic space.